بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم أنا محمد خليل بن عبد الله يا what's up this is K real the rapper so check it out uh, there's a lot of bullshit going on from white supremacist intelligence agencies and colonizers about um, the troop withdrawal in Afghanistan these are the laws that govern um, you know occupation force leaving this is the same thing I want America and Canada to do here they must collapse their government get rid of democracy, get off of my land. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. The same thing must happen here on this land because je suis le Creole Louisiane, mon Creole Louisiane, that I'm the indigenous native of what was called French Louisiana Indian Reservation or Spanish Louisiana Indian Reservation, which existed from 1500 to 1803 until America invaded. We're still living under American invasion. And 75% of the African population that lived in that land was Muslim that mixed with the native population. You know what I'm saying? And British English, Anglo-Saxon Anglo English speaking people deny that history. But it's easy. You could Google it. You could find it. It's all over the Internet from government websites all around the world and from uh, educations of higher learning. So this is IHL, International Humanitarian Law, Rule 64, conclusion of an agreement to suspend combat with the intention of attacking by surprise at adversary, adversary relying on it. So this is what they're doing. ISIS, remember, is Israeli Secret Intelligence Agency. Israeli Secret Intelligence Services, right? ISIS, I-S-I-S. -S. As, uh, you know, 1989, CIA had admitted this on Book TV C-SPAN. We already know this is valid. Book TV is valid. C-SPAN is valid. You know what I mean? When the CIA is saying something out of their mouth, it's valid. Uh, Israeli intelligence also, um, you know, in the same uh, show, Acknowledge that ISIS and 1989 was Israeli secret intelligence services. So we know what these white people are doing. They're playing this game talking about that they care about Afghan women's education. Which they don't. They don't care about any Muslims. You never believe these Kafirs believe uh, anything that they support Muslim people, that they care about our children, or that they care about women. Whenever they're making uh, comments that they care about our children or women, know that that's a plot and a ploy to try to attack or kill. You know what I'm saying? This is how whites and white supremacists and their allies attack Muslims of all colors. I'm a black man who is a native. You know what I'm saying? A native. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I'm a Muslim. You feel me? You know, via biological tribal ancestry. You know, which you could get into that later if you want to go Google Louisiana Creole and Islam or start to see the tribes that we originate from. You can see that the native people did mix with a gang of Muslims who were Africans. You know what I'm saying? So the European intent, which includes all of the Americans, whether or not they're European by race, you know what I'm saying? They surely behave like white supremacist Europeans, is to uh, use this troop withdrawal in order to uh, find a new or instigate a new um, justification for renewed killings on Muslims. That's what they need right now. So you definitely need to be watching Israel right now. Israel's definitely at the airport. They've been airlifting people to Israel. I don't even, other than um, for the propaganda value, I don't even know why Israel's doing that. I pray that every, all those Afghans help the, the Palestinians that wind up in Israel. You know what I'm saying? So uh, this is actual uh, law of war and law of war crimes practice, volume two, chapter 18, section eight, summary, state practices. Establish this rule as a norm of customary international law applicable in both international and non-international armed conflicts. The rule is based on uh, respect for good faith, which is a Christian a doctrine, you know what I'm saying? You see this Christian nonsense all over and over again in European legal systems, you see what I'm saying? But they claim that there's separation between church and state and democracies. Do not follow their systems. Violations would involve violations of those rules that are implemented via agreements to suspend combat, such as evacuation of the wounded or sick or civilian. See Rule 109 and 129 and see what America is trying to say is that they're focused on um, evacuating Afghans, right? But you also have to understand that this land of America and Canada does not belong to them. It's a tribal land trust. We're in the same situation as Afghanistan. We're colonized and occupied. So really, legally under the law, they're supposed to leave our land too and return our sovereignty back to all of the tribes, including mine, Louisiana Creole, right? Let's continue. International armed conflicts. 
a breach of an agreement to suspend combat consti- constitutes a breach of trust and is a violation of the principle of good faith. The fact that the rule finds its basis in the good principle of good faith is expressed in Libra Code. Let me stop there. The Libra Code, go look it up. Libra Code is about black people in American Civil War. That's where the Libra Code came from. Okay? Which states that the military necessity admits of such deception as does not involve the breaking of good faith, either positively pledged regarding agreements entered into during the war or supposed by modern law of war to exist. The UK military manual emphasizes that good faith as expressed in observances of promises is essential in war. This rule is set forth in numerous military manuals. Some of these manuals considered that feigning of a ceasefire perfidious, which happened when the United States uh, 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 became the United States and transformed itself from England to the United States and Canada transformed itself from England into the United States. Yet Canada is still supposedly governed by pretender queen, Queen Elizabeth, in violation of King George III's Royal Proclamation Line of 1763, right, which banned all British people and their American government at that time from being on our land enslaving African or natives and coming onto our land of French Louisiana, which they are now illegally um, occupying. Perfidy is also the act of telling us that we have rights. When they tell black people we have civil rights and they refuse to enforce our civil rights, that's an act of perfidy. You must recognize black people that we are at war. You know what I'm saying? That we are at war and that when you're reading these laws, you start to understand exactly what's really happening to us. You understand when you read the war crimes law that you see enslavement is Article 7 war crime. Enslavement and slavery is a war crime. So you must understand that these things are war crimes and crimes against humanity. And not one shot needs to be fired or not one person needs to be killed for a war to be ongoing or for hostilities to be continuing. You must understand that law, right? The U.S. Field Manual Air Force pamphlet, for example, state a false broadcast to the enemy that armistice has been agreed upon and is widely recognized to be treacherous. Got to understand that. You know what I'm saying? They do this all the time telling us that it's peace. They do it all the time when they tell you that democracy gives you the right to vote. And then these mother- white people, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to censor myself. You know, they uh, they stab us in the back and continue their hostile murder and slavery. If you go look up 18 United States Code, Chapter 77, right, 1581 to uh, uh, 1597, I believe, you will find uh, the federal codification of slavery. If you look at 1581, it talks about arrest with the intent to return somebody back to the condition of slavery. All right. This is perfidy because they're telling us that we have rights. But clearly, when you read the law, it tells you that their arrest are intent to turn you back to slavery. You know what I'm saying? 13th Amendment clearly gives America the right to re-enslave people using their judiciary, which is the, 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 the their judges, their courts and their law enforcement and their, their prison system, whether it's private or owned by the public. It's all slavery. And slavery is what? It is a war crime. Right. And also, we've already went over what perfidy and perfidy is what to tell people that they have rights. Right. And that they don't have rights. But you're using that to make your enemy um, docile. So it's easier to attack them. It's an act of treachery. Again, the violation of any agreement to suspend combat, whether a truce, armistice, capitulation or agreement to that effect is an is an offense under the legislation of the states. Of many states, this rules. This rule is also supported by official statements, for example, by Iraq in context of the Iraq-Iran-Iraq war. All right. So back to the native context. Louisiana Creole have no treaty with the United States. We have no armistice with the United States or Canada post the the French and Indian War because they felt like no Africans and no natives um, were, were, were worthy of negotiating a treaty and that we had no rights because we're niggers. That's what white people believe about us, right? So they didn't sign a treaty with us. So legally, we're still at war because we have lack of armistice. Go ask a lawyer. All right. So non-international armed conflicts. 
the draft protocol additional two, right? Which if you go look at additional protocol one, it clearly states that all people who were colonized suffering from racism that are uh, 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 fighting for freedom are engaged in international armed conflicts, a.k.a. a war. So this is talking about additional protocol two of Geneva Convention submitted by ICRC to the diplomatic conference leading to the adoption of additional protocols provided when carried out in order to commit or resume hostilities. The feigning of ceasefire constitutes perfidy, which is a war crime. This provision it was deleted from the draft during the negotiations of the Committee 3 of the Diplomatic Conference. This does not mean, however, that such acts would be lawful in non-international law or non-international armed conflicts. So again, our international struggle or our non-international struggle are our struggle inside of this land that's occupied and labeled, falsely labeled America, right? It is, it is and isn't an international uh, armed conflict. You know what I'm saying? It is and it isn't. Under additional protocol one, it is. You know what I'm saying? So I'm talking about Afghanistan and I'm talking about the black situation, the black Louisiana Creole and the other black native tribes, as well as all the black tribes from Africa and everywhere else that were enslaved in North America. I'm, I'm comparing both because I'm talking to both populations. I'm talking to the Afghans. I'm talking to Muslims from around the world. I'm talking about the Muslim slave descendants, the people that were enslaved in the Americas that are Muslims or a Muslim descent. And I'm also talking to the black natives. You know what I'm saying? Because all this stuff ties together, you know? Um, so we're going to keep going. So we're saying uh, this provision was deleted from the draft during negotiations in Committee 3 of the Diplomatic Conference. This does not mean, however, that such acts would be lawful in non-international armed conflicts. The principle of good faith in the implementation of agreements applies equally in international, non-international armed conflicts. See Rule 63. So the, 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 the European law, they hate Sharia and they hate other cultures' form of indigenous law, right? But um, this Christian law continuously talks about in good faith, right? When a white man does certain things and then they, they, the way they move is not really in good faith. It's called the opposite, bad in bad faith, you know? So I hate these terms, you know, because they're highly Christian terms, which are white supremacy terms, which are couched in ideological warfare. Why? To make you assimilate, aka to brainwash you into living under their society, Right under their Europeanized Judeo-Christian rules, and I don't think like that. You know what I'm saying? I think like an indigenous person. You know what I'm saying? Military manuals are applicable in or have been applied in non-international armed conflicts, including this prohibition. You know what I'm saying? Violation of this rule in any armed conflict is an offense under the legislation of many states. States as in nations or governments. This rule is also supported by official statements and reported practice in the context of non-international armed conflicts. No official contrary practices was found. Violations of, the, of this rule has generally been condemned. No party to a non-international armed conflict was reported to have claimed the right to conclude an agreement to suspend combat with the intention of attacking or surprise the enemy by relying on that agreement. So also, when these people use their American laws, right, to arrest you, right, they arrest you, you know what I'm saying, and then they release you, you know what I'm saying, with any intent to try to re-arrest you or to try to use their bail system, which is bail bond slavery, bond slavery, right, and in the, in, in the International Convention on Slavery, it says that all forms of slavery shall be stamped out, which America signed, Right. So they're using their legal jurisdiction, you know, what I'm saying to enslave, you know, and to hostile occupy other nations. And you also must understand native indigenous peoples that just because you were born within the borders of this colony called the United States of America, Inc., at, a.k.a. Compagnie Amérique, you know, that um, does not make you American citizen. So I turned off my data. I was trying to go to related practices. I'm not trying to give up too much game on this. Let's see. Turn on my data again. Bam. We're trying to go to related practices, you know. Uh, reload. 
Okay, so let's turn off the data again. All right, so I don't give a fuck about those numbers you saw. You know, the practice relating to the rule 64, conclusion of agreement to suspend combat with the intention of attacking by surprise the adversary by relying on it. And it says treaties, treaty law. So that goes back to Article 6.2 of the United States Constitution. Native people, you see why I bang like this. You understand why I'm a Mujahid and why I rock like this. Because you understand I'm a soldier and everything I'm doing is calculated and planned out. And I already have America and Canada in checkmate. My problem is other black people and other people around the world. You know what I'm saying? I'm already got him in checkmate with the law. Additional protocol two draft article 21 subsection one or enclosure one. If you're a military, that's the enclosure of the draft. Additional protocol two sub, sub submitted by ICRC to the CDDH provided that when carried out in order to commit or resume hostilities, the feigning or of a ceasefire was considered an act of perfidy. Bam. And then you can see where that quote comes from. This is the military manual or government manual where this quote comes from. So what is feigning? Feigning is when you fake you. You're faking. You're acting like, you know, your your truce. So here here is an example of feigning on the battlefield. Uh, You play dead. Right. And enemy soldiers come and you stab them with the bayonet and kill them. That's a form of feigning. Right. Feigning is also you wave a white truce flag and then uh, you blow up your enemies when they come to uh, be like, OK, cool. Y'all surrender. We ain't going to fight. You know what I'm saying? Feigning is also when you sign a peace treaty with somebody. Right. And you make them believe that they have rights. Right. And then you continue killing them. Do you understand native people? Do you understand black indigenous people? New Zot, Zot Creole. You understand. Compri. Compri. Huh? Tokone? Uh-huh. Okay, so we're going to keep going. Bismillah. All right, back to the Libra Code, which was established during the American Civil War. It was about our ancestors. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the Libra Code is about slavery. Libra Code, Article 15, 1863. Libra Code states, The military necessity admits that it, of such deception as does not involve breaking good faith, either positively pledged regarding agreements entered into during the war or supposed by modern law of war to exist. Men who take up arms against one another in public do not cease on this account uh, to be moral beings responsible to one another, to God. So you must also understand that this Liber Code, right, when it's talking about deception and perfidy, that this stuff was de directly dealing with us and all these black politicians that are handpicked by white supremacy to uh, keep us in check. You know what I'm saying? Like how they try to use John Lewis against uh, uh, Stokely Carmichael and Kwame Toure and H. Rod Brown, a.k.a. Imam Jamil Alameen and other people from SNCC. You know what I'm saying? How they try to use their government as a method of deception to show that we have civil rights that they do not enforce because every judge that I've ever met in the United States says that they don't follow treaty law in their courts and that they don't have to enforce federal civil rights code why because of states rights which is a kkk argument right and didn't this libra code get written because of the those people that were part of the kkk right which was formed as a clandestine military intelligence organization and an underground clandestine military guerrilla movement to attack and kill and undermine black people whether they're black indigenous but Africans are also black indigenous, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, whether they're black indigenous as meaning native or whether they were African, you know what I'm saying? Slave descendants or first generation, whatever it was, African, whatever. You know what I'm saying? The Libra Code was written about us. All these black politicians who are currently in power are engaging America and Americans as if there's not an ongoing war against black people. This is wrong. Libra Code is a whole section of law, of war crimes law, that was written regarding the black people in this country. And it's used in every single war. Let's go. ICRC, uh, Section 3, Military Manual. So now we start to go through every country 
you start to see what all these different countries are saying in alphabetical order on the IHL database. So you can go on IHL, which is International Humanitarian Law Database, right? Which is controlled by the ICRC, the International Red Cross, Red Crescent. You know what I'm saying? So this ICRC, what does it do? It monitors war crimes and reports war crimes back to the United Nations for the purposes of what? Prosecution, right? And prosecution leads to what? Reparations. Reparations is issued for what? Reparations is issued for war crimes and crimes against humanity. So let's go on. These are the Australian manuals, Belgium, Burkina Faso, Cameroon, and also another one from Cameroon. So we can start to see what every country's military manuals are saying about these laws. Australia, LOAC manual, 2006 states that to demand a ceasefire and then to break it by surprise or to violate a safe conduct or any other agreement in order to kill or wound or capture troops would be perfidious. The LOAC manual replaces both Defense Force Manual 1994 and the Commander's Guide 1994. Do you see how adept IHL is? So also, when they were attacking the Black Panther Party or Muslims or SNCC during the Civil Rights Movement, all these black organizations, UNIA, which is Marcus Garvey's organization, whenever they would come and they would try to tell black people that they needed to surrender or whatever, you know what I'm saying, that these were all acts of perfect, you know what I'm saying, they, they're telling you that we have rights and then they're violating our rights. Just like after the Civil War, they said that they had we had rights, but then the clandestine military organization, the KKK, was still able to engage in guerrilla warfare, and they've been waging guerrilla warfare nonstop. So since 1940s, we have Nazi organizations within the United States, right, which is a colony. It's a hostile foreign occupying power under Geneva Convention Article 4 and 1907, right? So... These are all war crimes, right? But you have these Nazis that have appeared after 1940s when the establishment of the Nazi party, right? Um, nationalist, socialist movement. Um, we have these Nazis all across the United States, right? But it's clear that there's a clear conspiracy within state actors, a.k.a. people that work for the government, a.k.a. under color of law, which means somebody who is empowered with the authority of the government, right? And they're using that authority to deprive rights, which is a legal term, right? For what? Discrimination. Let's continue. Belgium. Show you that rappers are not stupid. Belgium. Belgium's law of the law of war manual. 1983. My birthday. Cuz. <laughs> the... The, the, the denunciation of an armistice for a doubtful motives in order to surprise the adversary without giving him time to prepare could be considered an act of perfidy. What did I tell you? Louisiana Creole have no armistice with the United States. Peep game. Burkina Faso is a Muslim country in Africa full of people that are tied to many of the tribes that were enslaved in the United States including the Fulani. Peep game. Burkina Faso's disciplinary regulations 1994 provides that the laws under customs of war, right, which is a section of law, customs of war, this is what we're going in, it is prohibited to fire at, injure, kill an enemy whom a suspension of combat has concluded, right? So this is why the Taliban is like, you guys got to get out. America's playing this game right now. And here is the, 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 the military manual that this is coming from West Africa, Burkina Faso, Regiment de Discipline General dans les Forces Armées, Décret, and then it gives you the numbers. Uh, ninety four dash one five nine. I pray def ministre ministre de la defense or defense nineteen ninety four article thirty five uh, enclosure two. You know what I'm saying? This is an African military manual. So then we go to Cameroon, right? Which is another African country. What full of Fulani people, right? Also very similar to Louisiana Creole culture. Why they make grigri? Yeah, you understand? Compre. Tokone, yeah, way we gonna continue to go. Cameroon's disciplinary regulations, 1975, provides that under the laws of customs of war, it is prohibited to fire on or to kill an enemy with whom suspension of combat has concluded. Now, Cameroon, 
régiment de discipline dans les forces armées. This is the, 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 the manual, okay? So what are you starting to see now? You're starting to see what's called in law something called conformity, something that the United States does not have. Why? Because the United States is a racist, white supremacist country. They don't have conformity in a lot of laws. Why? Because they're racist. There's higher laws. These are the highest laws in the world, okay? Do you understand that? Your little civil rights law, it's not, it's not the highest law. Your little penal codes, that's low-level laws, trash. Your penal codes are trash. They're toilet paper. Wipe my ass with them. But this is the high law, the international law, law of customs, international customary law, um, uh, laws of war. You know what I'm saying? We're starting to see that these laws sound like they were just copied and pasted. Why? Because of conformity. Because the laws of conformity mean that um, certain laws, every country must comply and abide by the same way. But America and white supremacist, white supremacist colony nations act like they're above the law. Right. But they tell us black people that we're the criminals and that we have it like we're above the law. But we don't have the right education. We were taught to be slaves. We about the man up on a ass. Cameroon. Cameroon's disciplinary regulations of 2007 states that Article 32 prohibits. It is prohibited to soldiers in combat to fire at, injure, kill an enemy who surrenders, who is captured or with a suspension of combat has concluded, has been concluded. Cameroon, Regiment de Discipline Générale dans les forces de défense. Defense. All right. So Canada, which is boom, again, lining up with Louisiana Creole. Because why? They're illegally on our land. And we still own that land. We have right to that land held in common with all the other tribes that are originally from those lands. Right. When two tribes lands overlap in international law and domestic law and in Canadian law, those people own that land in common, just like an apartment owner or or, 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 or or a real estate owner who owns land or a building in common with another deed holder. You understand? Uh huh. We're going to continue. All right. Canada's LOAC manual, we keep seeing that, LOAC manual, 1999 states any agreement made by the belligerent commanders must be adhered to, and any breach of its conditions would involve international responsibility if ordered by a government, a res a pers and personal responsibility which might amount to a war crime, if it is committed by an individual on his or her authority. Between combatants, the most common purpose of such agreements is to arrange for an armistice or a truce, whether it is specific purposes or generally. Canada, again, Canada's LOEC manual, 2001, states that a chapter entitled Communications and Contract, Contact Between Opposing Forces. So, contact between opposing forces, right? Um, you know... They have what's called inviolability. Inviolability. These are your diplomats or your military commanders or your messengers, you know what I'm saying, who are sent like me. You know what I'm saying? I'm a messenger, a diplomat. I'm like, a, I am a royal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or I am. You know what I'm saying? For my people, Louisiana Creole. You know what I'm saying? And I continue to send messages to the United States government, to Canada, to France, to Spain, to other different governments around the world, also to African Union, to Latin American countries, you know what I'm saying? That we have what's called inviolability, but the United States does not recognize my inviolability, meaning inviolability means that those people should not be attacked, that they're neutral, right? They're neutral in the sense that no government is legally allowed to attack them, even if they are a part of the military, you understand? And they're carrying out a military agenda against another country. You know what I'm saying? And I don't hide that I have a military agenda against the United States and against Canada. It's open. My rights are clearly here in the IHL that I have these rights. I don't. Uncle Tom, shuck and jive, be a coward about it. So we're going to go to subsection one. Any agreement made by belligerent commanders must be adhered to. Any breach of its conditions would be considered international responsibility if 
a gov if ordered by a government and personal liability, which might amount to a war crime, right? So I think I already went over that. We're going to go to subsection two. Between combatants, the most common person of such agreements is to arrange for an armistice or a truce. Armistice is also called a peace treaty, whether for specific purposes or for generally. And then we could see Canada, the law of armed conflict at operational and tactical levels, Office of Judge Advocate General, August 13, 2001, in closure 1403. Congo, another African country. Let's see what Africa has to say. The Congo's disciplinary regulations, 1986, provides that under the laws and customs of war, it is prohibited to fire at, injure, or kill an enemy with whom suspension of combat has concluded. And then we see this from Congo Decree number 8605 du 14 janvier 8, 1986, portant règlement du service dans les armées populaires nationales, 1986. Article 32, enclosure 2. France, very important. Listen up, black people. Listen up, Creole people. France's disciplinary regulation 1975 was amended. That provides under ratified international conventions, it is prohibited to fire at, injure, or kill an enemy with whom suspension of combat has concluded. France, Règlement de discipline générale dans les armées. Décret number 75-65 of 2-8 July 1975, replacing decree number 667-749, completed on decree of 11 October 1978, implemented by instruction number 52000, DEFC 5 of 10 December 1979, modified on decree of 12 July 1982, Ministre de la Défense, État Major de la Armée Tetere, Bureau Employé, Article 9B. Trois. Well, I mean, deux. Deux. Sorry, my bad. Germany. All right which Germany is very important because at the time that uh, Louisiana Creole were at war with the United States in the French Indian War, um, the, the, the English king was married to a German woman. So it's very important for Creoles also to understand Louisiana Creole politics between the Germans that were loyal to us and the German enemies who were allied with the British. All right. Germany's military manuals 1992 gives example of act of perfidy, the conclusion of humanitarian agreement to suspend the combat with intention of attacking by purpose the enemy relying on it. The manual also states during an armistice, it is definitely forbidden to move forces in contact with the enemy uh, forward to employ reconnaissance patrols. So this is why you see the Taliban. The Taliban is actually following international law to the T. They're at the airport, but they're not entering the airport. They're not trying to engage. They're making sure that nobody is able to attack the United States. Why? Because that would be a grave breach of the armistice truce, right? Which would make them fall under acts of perfidy, which makes it a war crime. You understand what I'm saying? These people right now, they have their spies and they have their intelligence. They have their CNN, which is part of their intelligence already starting all this shit talking about, oh, but the girls aren't able to go to school. I saw a report the other day of incitement where they're trying to talk to the dude and the dude's trying to explain to him that they are giving girls education, but it's Islamic education. And me being a Muslim, I understand what that means, because if you're not a Muslim, you're not going to understand when in a Muslim from any country or any culture tells you that Islamic education will teach you everything that you need to know. There's math, science, psychology, okay? There's history, geography, okay? There's medicine, there's law. There's all kinds of different things within Islam, within the Quran, when you break it down and start teaching it on an educational, institutional level. So these white women are talking about, oh, but they're not gonna be able to go to regular school because they want people all around the world and non-white countries to go to their white educational, institutional systems why? For the purposes of forced assimilation, 
right? And to brainwash you. And so that they can continue to gain power over you based on your education. We're not playing that game, okay? Indigenous peoples, we are no longer playing these games. Greece, the Hellenic Territorial Army's Internal Service Code 1984 is amended provides it is forbidden for members of the armed forces to, mal to maltreatment, injure, or kill the enemy with whom a truce is agreed. Greece, Hellenic T Territorial Army, Regulation of Internal Code, Presidential Decree 1310, 1984, Military Regulation 20 dash one as amended by article 15 a all right so we go to italy and this continues to go down italy's ihl manual 1991 provides that in the case of violation of an armistice the local commander can react as circumstances require only in this the supreme commander with the consent of the government can denounce an armistice or order resumption of hostilities so that means the main general you know what i'm saying has a right if somebody commits an act of perfidy, okay? And in my capacity for Louisiana Creole, you know what I'm saying? Since a lot of people are scared to continue this fight that's been ongoing since the French Indian War, I'm already documented, you know what I'm saying? By FBI, by United States Marshal Service, you know what I'm saying? By the State Department, by several presidents as being a military leader, you know what I'm saying? So I would consider myself the main... um military local commander although there are other creoles that are frontlining this fight you know what i'm saying hostile attacks committed by individuals on their own initiative are not considered violations of armistice agreement but punishment can be indemnity can be demanded so this is what happened basically today you had the two bombings that happened at the airport today so this is italy Emmanuel did uh der, derito um, i'm not even gonna try to try to read uh, uh italian right now it's not happening um mali which is another muslim country which is you know where a lot of the africans um from louisiana creole ancestry also come from right mali's army regulations 1979 states that under the laws of custom, laws and customs of war it is prohibited to fire at injure or kill an enemy with the suspension of combat has been concluded mali règlement du service dans armée one erre parte discipline general minister de l'office national 1979 article 36 okay so we're going to keep going north africa Morocco, Muslim country, right? Ironically, many people are saying that Louisiana Creole people are Moors. Um, there are very few people who are considered Moorish to have been enslaved in French Louisiana or Spanish Louisiana, and the majority of those people came from Mauritania. Now, moving on. Morocco's Disciplinary Regulations, 1979, provides that under the laws and customs of war, it is prohibited to fire at, injure, or kill an enemy to whom suspension of combat has committed. Morocco, Reglement de Discipline Regenerale dans the Force, Armée Royale, Royale, Dahir, number Wahid, no, I'm not going to do it in Arabic, 74, Talata, ah, no, 8, Talata, do, 15, Rajab, 1394, that's the Islamic date, Hijri, 5, August 1974, Article 25, Enclosure 2, all right, Netherlands. Netherlands, Holland, the military manual 1995 of the Netherlands provides that it is prohibited to violate an agreement concluded with the adverse party or example concerning a ceasefire to search for or collect wounded or dead. All right. So also when these police uh, uh, release us on bail with the intent to gun us down on the streets, some of our more, um, you know, key assets as far as blacks within the community. These are war crimes. Why? You need to go look back at Additional Protocol 1 at Geneva Convention that says all those people that were, um, I'm paraphrasing, all those people that were colonized, enslaved, and occupied, right, um, have a right to fight for independence and that they're, fi they're fighting against racist regimes, that those fights are cons con considered international arms conflicts in, in the sight of international law. You know what I'm saying? Come on, black people. We stepping it up. New Zealand, which was an all black country, which was invaded by England, right? And now they're trying to whitewash all the Maoris. The Maoris are black people, okay?
get it right. The Maoris are black people, okay? They're related to the to the Aboriginals of Australia, the Papua New Guineans. You know what I'm saying? And the people of uh, of, uh, uh, of 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 uh, you know Oceania. You know what I'm saying? Or 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 Polynesia. You know what I'm saying? But they're not Polynesian. You know what I'm saying? The New Zealanders. Any agreement made by belligerent commanders must be scrupulously adhered to. And a breach of its conditions would involve international responsibility, liability for its compensation. If ordered by its government, it would be personally li- 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 a personal liability which might amount to a war crime if it is committed by an individual on his own authority. Right. And then we're going to look at the manual and see what manual this is. New Zealand Interim Law of Armed Conflict Manual, DM-112, where the players dwell. All right. New Zealand Defense Force Headquarters, Dict- Dict- Directorate of uh, Legal Services, Wellington, November 1992, Enclosure 407, Enclosure 1, right? So, or Subsection 1. The manual also states, in general, it's contrary to modern practice to attempt to obtain advantage of an enemy by deliberately lying, lying, for instance, by declaring that an armistice has been agreed upon, when in fact it is not the case. We have no armistice with the United States. Wake up, Louisiana Creole people. In addition, the manual states violation of terms of the armistice by individual acting on his own initiative entitles the injured party to demand punishment of the offender. If the party injured captured the offender, then it may triumph for a war crime. New Zealand Interim Law of Armed Conflict, DM-112, where the players dwell. New Zealand Defense Force Headquarters, Directorate of Legal Services, Wellington, November 1992-1704, subsection 3. So, Nigeria, another country where Louisiana Creole people come from because it enslaved the Hausa, the Calabar, the 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 Ibibio, the Fulani, right? These are uh 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 Nigerian tribes that were enslaved in French Louisiana. Okay? Nigeria's mil- military manual. Nigeria's manual on laws of war states that informing the enemy that there is an armistice in order to make him leave his position is an illegitimate tactic. But right now, Nigeria is also using this. I will tell you, they're, 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 they're violating this right now. Why? Because the British and American and Israelis are using it against the Fulani and the Muslims in the north. You know what I'm saying? That Boko Haram stuff was created by intelligence agencies. Don't believe what these white people are telling you. Remember what I just showed you about lying. Republic of Korea, which is a South Korea... Under the Republic of Korea's Military Manual 187, 1991, acts committed in violation of terms of a cap- capitulation agreement constitute a war crime. Republic of Korea Military Regulation 187, January 1991, 4.2, right? A Russian Federation, right? The Russian Federation Regulations on Application of IHL 2001 states that use of armistice agreement to inflict destruction to root out enemy is considered as perfidy. Okay, and um, a lot of people in America are so slow, they still think that America is still called the USSR or the Soviet Union. Uh, they still think that uh, Russia still has KGB. They don't know that it's FSB, Federal Security Bureau. Moving on. The manual, this manual is Russian Federation Regulations of Applications of Internal Humanitarian Law by the Armed Forces of the Russian Federation. Ministry of Defense, Russian Federation, Moscow, 8 uh, to August 2001, uh, Enclosure 70, Senegal. Another country where many Louisiana Creole people chase their African ancestry back to many Bambara, many uh, 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 Jola, many uh, Fulani, many uh, Serer or Serahuli people, many of these different tribes were enslaved, right? And they mixed with the natives, the Bambara tribe from Mali and Senegal and um, Cameroon also there's Bambara, right? Those Bambara led one of the biggest slave rebellions with one of the with the Indian tribes in Mississippi and Louisiana, the Natchez Slave Rebellion. Go look it up. 
Senegal. Senegal's disciplinary regulation 1990 provides that under the laws and customs of war, it is prohibited to fire at, injure, or kill an enemy with whom suspension of combat has been concluded. Senegal, Reglement, Senegal, Reglement de Discipline de Lance à les Forces, Forces Armées, Decree 90 1159, 12 October 1990, Article 34, Enclosure 2, Switzerland. Switzerland's Basic Military Manual 1987 states that the violation of armistice is prohibited. The carrying of hostilities, carrying out of hostilities under the conclusion of the armistice or a violation of its provisions are war crimes. Okay? Switzerland, lui et coutume de la guerre. Extrait et commentaire. Reglement 51. Dot, uh, 712F Armée Suisse 1987 Articles 1942 and 200 Enclosure 2G Okay, Switzerland again Switzerland's regulation on legal basis of conduct during engagement 2005 states uh, section 17 sanctions for violations of international law of armed conflict 237 uh, section the following particular criminal offenses are violation of ceasefire and peace Switzerland basset legal legal du comportement comportement à l'engagement règlement Swiss Army issued based on Article 10 of the Ordinance of the Organization of the Federal Def Department for Defense, Civil Protection, Sports, on March 7, 2003, into a force, went into a force on uh, the 1st of July, 2005. So then we go to uh, the colonial party here um, that created America, who is the problem, right? The master slave master, England. The UK Military Manual 1958 states in good faith as expressed in the observance of promises is essential in war for without its hostilities could not be terminated with any, without any degree of safety short of uh, total destruction of one of the contending parties, right? Which would be an act of genocide, a.k.a. extermination. The United Kingdom, the law of war on being part three of the Manual of Military Law, the law, War Office, HMSO, 1958, Enclosure 308. The manual also states in general, it is contrary to the modern practice to the attempt to obtain advantage of the enemy by deliberately lying, for instance, by declaring that there's that, that an armistice has been agreed upon, and in fact, that is not the case. Listen to me, people. Checkmate. United Kingdom, the law of war, being part three of Manual Military Law War Office, HMO, 1958, enclosure 13, or 314. The manual further specifies to demand suspension of arms and then to break it by surprise or to violate safe conduct or any other agreement in order to obtain advantages in act of providity and is such provident forbidden the manual also provides it would be perfidy to denounce an armistice for the motive or under pretext more or less specific sorry and to surpri surprise the enemy without giving him time to put himself on guard you understand what's going on here in addition to grave breaches which you can find in 18 usc 2441 section C, right? You will see common article three war crimes, great breaches of 1949 Geneva Convention that follows are examples of punishable violations of laws of war, war crimes, violations of, to, uh, violations of surrender. The United Kingdom, UK LOAC manual, uh, 2004 states it would be Perfidy to denounce an armistice uh, for the motive 
or pretext of surprise the adverse party without giving him time to put himself on guard. On the other hand, the existence of armistice is no reason to be relaxed, is no reason for relaxing either vigilance or readiness of troops for action uh, or revealing positions to an enemy he would not detect during combat. United States, United Snakes of America, the U.S. Field Manual 1956 provides to broadcast to the enemy that an armistice has been agreed upon when such is not the case is treacherous. The manual also states it is outrageous act of perfidy and would either party without warning resume hostilities during the, a period of armistice with or without formal denunciation. Therefore, except in the case of urgency upon convincing proof of international and serious violations of its terms of other property. The manual further states, in addition to the grave breaches of the Geneva Convention in 1949, the following acts are representative of violations of law of war crimes, violations of terms of surrender. United States Field Manual 27, Tact 10. The Law of Land and Warfare, United States Department of Army, 18 July 1956, modified number 1, uh, 15 July 1976, 1976, enclosure 504N. All right. United States of America, U.S. Air Force pamphlet, 1976, states that the feigning of a ceasefire, for example, of perfidy. United States Air Force pamphlet, 110, TAC, 31, international law under the conduct of armed conflict. In uh, air operations, U.S. Department of Air Force, 1976, enclosure 8, TAC 3, enclosure A. This is what I do all day, people. I play chess. Do y'all play chess like me? Join me. Let's get down. United States of America, U.S. Instructor's Guide, 1985, provides in addition to grave breaches of the Geneva Conventions. The following acts further examples of war crimes. Violating Surrender Terms, United States Instructor's Guide, Law of War, Headquarters of the Departments of Army, Washington, April 1985, page 13 and 14. And then it goes into national legislation, which I've already been on this video for a long time. It will all scroll kind of slowly so y'all can read this for yourself. It's going to slowly just go through each country's rules on, um, you know, uh, what happens when a war ends and a treaty has been signed or an agreement has been signed or withdrawal, ha an evacuation process has occurred or is in the process of going on. This is what's going on. See, every country in the world, you know, they have their rules and it's codified. It's codified. You see this? Every single country in the world, they all, this is conformity, the laws of conformity, the rules of conformity, Right. That these things must all fall in line. You know what I'm saying? There are certain laws that every government must follow. You understand? So this is talking about case law. There's no case law to be cited. And then national practice. So then it's showing you how these laws have really been applied. <coughs> excuse me. By different armies. In different wars. And then se Section 7. United Nations. So there we go.